Thank you for joining me on another episode of You Are The One You Seek. I'm your host, David, and I am so close to being done with the Yeshua channelings. Got one more chapter today, and then one more chapter next episode with the uh, notes on channeling from Pamela and a little bit about her. And on a more personal note, I was able to chat with Pamela this last weekend, and that was really, really, really nice to finally kind of get to know her a little bit after reading so much of her material. And she voluntarily channeled Yeshua for me as kind of a preview of of a potential episode that we could record in the future where she will channel Yeshua and I will ask questions. So I was not prepared to ask Yeshua questions, so I was a little off guard, but I, I remembered that one of my most pertinent questions in my mind was, have we met before in, as, as humans? And, um, and the reaction, you know, is really interesting. You know, Pamela has her eyes closed and her head kind of shoots back real quick. And But then Yeshua goes, hmm, well, you were a soldier in the Middle East, like, and proceeded to tell me that in a past life I was yeah, a soldier somewhere, and that I had heard about Yeshua's uh, teachings while he was still on earth uh, teaching them, and that I was really moved by the material, and I decided to, as Yeshua said, travel a really long way across the Middle East to come and hear him speak. And I actually was able to make it to a teaching, but it was like this um, public square that was super, super crowded, and I could barely even hear him. I don't even know if I could see him, but I could barely hear him. But just the little bit that I was able to hear, and I was, I, he said that my heart opened up and just it kind of exploded with love, or, or that I received all of this love and felt the energy, the Christ consciousness of Yeshua's presence. And uh, that from that moment on, I decided I couldn't kill anymore. I couldn't fight. I couldn't be a, a soldier. And so I was humiliated by my unit, I guess, or whatever. I guess I traveled back home and told him I was defecting. I didn't really get the details there, but I found that really compelling. It really sounds consistent with, that sounds like something I would do in this life. Like if I was raised to be a a real serious man and to go to war and to fight, there's still that part in me that is searching for meaning and truth and deeper answers and I've I've been that way this whole lifetime so it's pretty wild to hear that you know 2000 years ago I was kind of the same way and that even then I was able to hear what Yeshua was teaching which I'm sure at that time was much more you know it's word of mouth but probably a lot more undistilled than the Bible and I would guess a lot more accurate so that's something I want to ask Yeshua when we have the interview episode is how how much in the Bible is actually accurate versus what you were actually teaching. And he does cover that a bit in the Yeshua channelings. If you listen to Who is Yeshua, the very first chapter in the book, it's a great introduction to how he d- differentiates himself from the Jesus of the Bible. And explains that the Bible was was manipulated to wield power and control over people and you know that makes a lot of sense when you consider that it was a pope pope damasus and i think 382 you can definitely fact check me i probably am wrong on the date (laughs) but i think it was around 382 a.d that pope damasus canonized the bible from 72 to 66 books and some of those excluded books paint jesus in, in a pretty different light You can research that on your own. I'm not going to go into that rabbit trail, but I think that um, there were elements, there there were nuggets of truth and words that were accurate that came through, but I think a lot of it was altered and, and, and changed, especially the parts about eternal punishment and needing Jesus for forgiveness of sins. That's stuff I want to ask, but I also proceeded to ask if I was a light worker soul and or an earth soul which is just a matter of experience as read in these channelings. And 
Yeshua told me I was a light worker, which is what I had assumed based on my personality and, and how I view the world. But that was kind of cool to get that confirmation. Um, and it's kind of a t- it's kind of terrifying because it means that, you know, in the past I was part of the problem and have even been that at times in this lifetime, but, but more in an aggressive way. I was part of this nefariously minded or negatively oriented non-human intelligence that came here to insert the drama of warfare and all that kind of stuff. Like Earth, Earth was a paradise at one point. But, you know, it's all, on, it's all in cycles. Everything moves according to this wild mechanic that we put into the universe that continues the process forward, even when we, when we get stuck. The planets, you know, the, the energies of each planet in different alignments, those all facilitate a change towards a new paradigm. And so regardless, again, of, of where we're at, and even when a person like Yeshua comes and gives us this pure and perfect truth, it gets distorted down into, oh, we have to worship you, you're the Savior, we're rotten by ourselves, we're going to hell by ourselves, you know, all these distortions when Yeshua was trying to teach that we are pure, perfect, radiant, divine light refracted through a filter to have this human experience where the idea of separation is completely necessary or else you're not immersed into it. You know, if we knew everything about who and what we were, none of this would work because we would instantly be like, oh, I give up. I'm going home. This is bullshit. <laughs> if you've ever seen the show Resident Alien with Alan Tudyuk, highly recommend it. One of the, one of the classic lines, this is some bullshit. But um, I won't give the premise of that. It's, it's, a, it's a really clever show. And uh, I have a, a crush on Alan Tudyuk from Firefly. If you've never seen Firefly either, oh, man. It's only one season. Do yourself a favor. And then watch the accompanying movie, Serenity. Oh, brilliant. Anyway, back to Yeshua. So today's chapter is Children of the New Era. And this one is really cool if you're like me and you have kids. And especially if you're trying to know what to expect for those children or like, you know, it might help assuage some of your fears about sort of the hopeless feeling world that we're being thrust into and what that means for our children. But I I really believe in my heart that a big change is coming soon and that there's going to be some sort of catalyzing event, whether it's a solar flash or some type of major no-doubting, no-doubter type thing, you know, alien contact that is clear and definitive, which my my guess is that's coming much sooner than later as well. And by alien, it's probably going to be beings that have been living among us anyway. We're probably more alien to Earth than anything else here, to be to be honest. That's another can of worms. <laughs> You can listen to the Bashar channelings or Cryon or some of these if you're interested in kind of more going that direction. So anyway, um, I'm I'm doing a little more rambling than usual up front, but I will keep it short on the back end of this chapter. I do put these YouTube episodes into chapters now so that you can skip ahead to the reading if you're not into my brand of, of thought and ideas. And if you're not, that's, of course, totally cool. Like, I'm just one guy with one perspective, and I certainly don't expect that to resonate with everybody. I, In fact, I expect it not to because that's the variety of who we are as souls. Like, we're not just these one-dimensional creatures that are black or white, on or off. Like, we have layers and depth. And so some stuff that I say may really resonate with you while someone else will go, this guy is full of it. He's pretentious and misguided and awkward or whatever. Now I'm starting to project, right? <laughs> but anyway, I, I appreciate all of, all of you who have been listening. It really does mean a lot. And I'm not doing this to boost my ego and feel superior, like, ooh, I'm, I'm really figuring out a lot of deep stuff. I should talk about it like I'm smart. No, I just want other people to go on the own, their own journey of self-awakening. There's nothing in it for me other than the, the satisfaction of knowing that others are awakening to their own light. And that was something Yeshua told me as well, was that I, more than anything, want everyone to be 
in unity. I guess I really remember that unity Christed consciousness in the soul uh, realm, and that's something I really want to bring to earth, and it pains me a lot when I see so much division and hatred and fighting for what seems like the most arbitrary reasons possible. But I have hope and I trust that we are turning a corner and the vision of the world that I see will be what is the reality that I live in and that I create. And that's the same for you too. Keep your vibes really high. Keep your dreams really big. And just in the moment, choose what gives you the most excitement and resonates the most with who you are. Don't do things out of fear or because someone else is telling you that will make you more complete. Do what is giving you the highest bliss in the moment. Using discernment, of course. You don't want to jump off a cliff and break your neck if you weren't prepared for the other part of it. But, you know, it's about really not feeling guilt when you act on your desires and your excitement. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and read the chapter now. The Children of the New Era Dear friends, I bid you a cordial welcome. My energy flows among you and is discernible to you as the energy of home, a home that you are moving towards and a source that you are coming from. My energy is not merely the energy of one man who lived on earth 2,000 years ago. I represent a source energy in which you all take part and in which your higher selves are present as one, as a group energy. On this level of oneness, there is an oversoul which you may call the Christ energy and which covers us all like an umbrella, including me, Yeshua. It is from this energy that we bring messages to you on earth and hold up a mirror to you when you have temporarily lost yourself and cannot find the way. It is the energy of your own higher self, your soul family, your oversoul that we wish to show you. We remind you of the source that you descend from and from which your deepest inspiration stems. The inspiration that joins you together has to do with bringing light on earth. It has to do with the arrival of the new era. Your incarnation here and now on earth is deeply connected with the transitional times you live in. Now what I wish to speak of today is the arrival of a new generation of children on earth. These children show other qualities than you are accustomed to from the past. How has this come about? Where does this phenomenon come from? For that I have to take you back in time and show you how you have been the pioneers of the new wave of energy that these children are bringing in. There have been times on earth when the energy was heavy and tight. Everything was prescribed by rules and regulations with little room for the imagination and the intuitive powers which bring along a loving and playful energy. For ages this heavy energy took possession of the earth. I was a pioneer in breaking the hold of this suffocating energy in bringing light to a dark reality in which power and oppression was prevailing. There is oppression of the imagination, the freedom to express oneself, the energy of the heart. In the course of history, the Second World War has become a turning point. In the wake of this wartime, a new era and time spirit was born which is familiar to you as the revolution of the 60s. It also meant a spiritual revolution. The energy of the heart was reborn at that time, and although the energy of the 60s was to some extent free-floating and naive, it nevertheless constituted a breakthrough. It heralded a new and vibrant energy. All of you who were born during the period around and after the Second World War have been pioneers of the new era. It is from a spiritual foundation created by you that a new generation of children has now appeared, who recognize the song of your heart and carry it further. I would like to speak about these children now. These children come in with an energy that is purer and higher than ever. By higher, I mean that they are able to keep more of their soul energy intact as they arrive on earth. Another way of putting this is to say that the veil between your material reality and the spiritual realm has become thinner because of the pioneering work that you and many others have done during the decades after the Second World War. In those days, a lot was laid open. Traditional authorities were called into question. New concepts came to the surface and influenced the collective consciousness of humanity worldwide. At first sight, this led to confusion and chaos, 
but the energy of the heart always leads to confusion and chaos in the eyes of those who love rules and structures and who look up to an unfaltering authority to hear the truth. Those days are gone. You are all aspiring to feel and found the new energy of truth and clarity within yourself. This inner work paves the way for a new era on earth. You all have one foot in the old era and one foot in the new. The transition to the new is a long, gradual transformation. The children who are being born now are already standing within the new era more than you have ever done. Nevertheless, there is an important connection and recognition between you and them. To clarify this, let me say some more about the various groups of children that are now entering the earth. All of you who are present here, and all who feel particularly drawn to this message are lightworker souls. I have talked about the characteristics of lightworker souls and their history throughout the ages and channelings past. See the Lightworker series. You are old and bring in the wisdom and experience of many, many lifetimes. Because of all that you went through, you have developed a sensitivity in your soul which makes you wise and compassionate, but vulnerable as well. Many times you felt you were different and did not fit in so well with your social environment, especially in times when order, discipline, and repression of the feelings were the normal way. This caused you deep suffering and it injured your feeling centers. But the sensitivity that is characteristic of you, you can now clearly see reflected in the eyes of the lightworker children that are being born on earth. This is the first group of new age children I would like to distinguish. They are lightworker souls who are basically the same as you, but they enter through a different gate or veil on earth. They are less burdened with the energy of the old era like you were. You had to deal with old educational methods, well-meaning but often stifling methods of raising children, which often repressed the child's original sense of wonder, imagination, and self-esteem. All that has been changing over the past decade. There is more freedom, more room for feeling, more understanding of the importance of the emotions, more respect for the individual nature of each person. The lightworker souls that are now entering are thus differently received in a different energy, and this enables them to bring more of their soul energy and their cosmic light through the veil. Their sensitivity is therefore clearly visible, and it can also cause imbalances, but I will go into that further below. I would like to distinguish a second group of the New Age children. They are the Earth Souls. They do not historically belong to the family of Lightworker Souls that we have been speaking of before. See the Lightworker series for the distinction between Lightworker Souls and Earth Souls. Their development is deeply intertwined with the evolvement of life on Earth. They are now, as a group, going through the early stages of letting go of ego-based consciousness and moving towards a heart-based consciousness. The Earth Souls who have entered in recent times display a greater sensitivity. This is because of their own inner development, but also because the veil is thinning and there is more room for emotional self-expression. They are also part of the new wave of energy that is now coming in through the children. Then there is a third group I wish to distinguish. They are currently called the Crystal Children by your spiritual literature. These children are relatively new on Earth. They have not spent many lifetimes here, although they have a rich experience with other dimensions or planes of existence. They have incarnated there in other forms than the human body. You might also call them the Star Children. Their energy is often dreamy, and they are also characterized by a great sensitivity. In their case, there may also be physical symptoms like food allergies or skin problems, which have to do with difficulties in getting accustomed to the energy of Earth, the density and crudeness of material reality. These newcomers on Earth bring along a very refined, ethereal energy, and they need ample protection and safety to be able to ground themselves fully. We have now named three groups of children who are all children of the New Age. Thus, we might say that all children incarnating presently are part of the New Era, according to their own nature. You who are hearing and reading this are especially acquainted with the Lightworker Souls, because you are one yourself. All of you are deeply inspired to bring light onto Earth, and at the same time, you carry within old wounds of rejection and loneliness. Because of this, it is not always easy for you to feel a loving and safe connection with the Earth. 
but it is this very point that is of utmost importance in helping the new children ground their energy and lead fulfilling lives. Experiencing a loving connection to earth reality yourself is a precondition for being able to coach and support them and to offer them the emotional safety they need. I will now mention some of the problems these children might meet and what you can do about it whenever you are in touch with them as a parent, teacher, or therapist. Some of you feel called to work with them, and this is very appropriate, since you are especially adept at recognizing their underlying motives and inspirations. You recognize aspects of them that were repressed and smothered in you during your childhood or later on. This is why encountering these children can affect you at a deep emotional level, for you see in them a reflection of yourself, your own love, your originality, and also your pain. Indeed, these children may just as well experience the pain of not feeling welcome on earth. Even if times have changed, it is not self-evident that they will find forms of manifestation that match their vibration and level of consciousness. This has several reasons. The first is that their energy or vibration does not yet match the energy of earth and of the collective human consciousness. They are ahead of their time, this lack of understanding between the old and the new is familiar to you from your own experience. There is a knowingness and heartfelt wisdom in you, the older generation, that has not been fitting very well into your societal reality. It goes against some deep-seated traditional values and notions and has met with skepticism and distrust. The children have to deal with this resistance too, for it is not yet gone. Moreover, this is the second reason, Material reality on earth has a slowness to it because of its density. Dreams and desires do not manifest quickly or easily. To truly realize your deepest inspiration, you have to be able to connect yourself to the earth at all levels, emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual. Only then can your energy find fertile ground and only then can the seeds of your soul sprout and flourish. For the children of the new era, it will be of great importance that they are able to ground themselves, meaning that they will know how to connect their cosmic energy, which can be sweeping, passionate, and inspired, to earth reality. It is important that they grow the patience to channel their soul energy to the energetic reality of this planet. Also, it is vital that they have patience with those parts of humanity and society that are walking behind and that are not yet able to grasp the wisdom they offer or that even interpret their behavior as obstinacy and rebelliousness. A collision is taking place between the old and the new that may cause problems. The energy of the new children will often be misinterpreted by people who are part of the old mentality, which says that discipline, order, and obedience are the prerequisites for the full development of the child's abilities and personality. Now, you are actually the ones who stand in between the old and the new here, and who are able to build a bridge. You have suffered because you had to control and keep inside much of your true spiritual energy. You know what it is like to feel blocked in your self-expression. You therefore understand the new children quite well. You understand their need to break free from rules based on authority and oppression of the feelings. These children need to have room for self-exploration and individuality, and at the same time, they need to understand the value of loving discipline as opposed to authoritarian discipline. They have to learn how to channel and manage their energy without repressing themselves. This is precisely the issue that you are dealing with yourselves on your own inner road. For all of you, it is vitally important that you are able to channel your cosmic energy, your inner spark of light, through your body into earth reality. In particular, it means that you have to deal with the emotions that block you from truly being present in the here and now and from expressing yourself in material reality. It is one of the biggest issues for lightworker souls, their complex, so to speak, that they carry a lot of spiritual energy on the upper side of their energy field, shoulders and head, which stagnates and cannot find its way down. The energy cannot properly connect to earth, which is another way of saying that you keep your energy inside and that you feel unable to express yourself satisfactorily. This can be the case either in your private relationships or in your working environment where you might feel less fulfilled and creative than you could be. All of this has to do with not being completely grounded. And the reason why the energy cannot go down and incarnate fully is that there are emotional traumas located in the area of the belly 
which block or interrupt the flow. Therefore, it is of great importance to focus your attention and awareness on these parts of you that are in need of emotional healing. It is vital that you acquire a fully embodied, grounded spirituality and that you do not keep this energy locked into the upper part of your auric field. In such a fashion, this energy can cause a naive and imbalanced form of spirituality which may give you ecstatic feelings and great enthusiasm every now and then, but which lacks the body to really connect to earth and manifest itself outwardly as a satisfying job, a stable, loving relationship, and or material abundance. The spiritual energy must connect to the emotional body, and from there on to the physical reality. What blocks the flow are old wounds, emotions such as fear and anger, feelings of inferiority, disappointment and bitterness about life. These are the emotional hurdles you bump up against, and I tell you that dealing with these basic emotional issues is the key to finding ways of supporting the new children. Your emotional healing will provide you with the means to help the children ground themselves in a loving yet disciplined way. For by steadily addressing these issues, you will set out an energetic trail for them. What does emotional healing mean? I would like to speak of this again, although it has been dealt with more thoroughly in earlier channelings, see dealing with emotions especially. You have all known times in which the emotions were repressed and considered more or less taboo. Especially the older ones among you grew up in a generation where this was standard. In the 60s, a counter-reaction followed and the emotions were set free, sometimes to the other extreme of exaltation. Emotions were put above reason. Rationality had to be set aside temporarily to freely investigate and transgress the boundaries of tradition. And it was fruitful to do so for a while, but the free exploration of suppressed emotional energies also had some pitfalls to it. One does not transform and heal the emotions by giving free rein to them and letting them control you. The essence of spiritual freedom is that one acknowledges all emotions and allows them to be there, while at the same time remaining fully conscious, i.e. embracing them with your own angelic consciousness. The unsolved emotional energies within you are like small children, confused, sad, or frightened, coming to you for comfort. By you, I mean to the angel in you, your higher self. In this manner, your higher angelic self descends into your own emotional body to do the healing work that is your mission. And when you do so, your light flows downward, through the lower energy centers or chakras, through your arms and legs, and out into the world. This is what it means to ground your angelic or soul energy. It is a process that requires self-discipline. I use the word discipline to point out that this does not happen automatically. The process of self-healing requires a steady and honest focus on your inner life and a willingness to face up to all the emotions inside. It is about acknowledging them as yours, taking responsibility for them and not feeling a victim of the past, of other people, or of society. No, you are the angel who has absorbed these emotions and who has the power to transform them. That is the reason you came to earth, to transform your fear, anger, and sadness into love, forgiveness, and understanding. By doing so, you will create for yourself a life of joy and fulfillment, and you will be at peace with the reality of the earth. And thus you set out an energetic trail for the new children who are and have been arriving. They come in with a higher energy thanks to your pioneering work, but without the assurance that this energy will find firm ground to stand on. To prepare such ground, all of us, society at large, will have to open up to the new and different aspects of these children. We need to welcome them and allow them to express their energy freely and at the same time, Teach them to develop the focus and patience to channel their energy to the reality of Earth. They need to express their soul energy, their cosmic inspiration, in material forms that belong to Earth. So they must feel able to express themselves emotionally, mentally, creatively, and spiritually in language, communication, and organization. It is important that they feel invited to bring their energy into this reality, even if it means they have to go through internal or external resistance and difficulties. 
the message of the new children, their clear crystal energy, can only land on fertile ground when we help them establish a loving connection to earth. With regard to this aspect, you yourselves are going through a fundamental transformation process in which the emotional body is the key. You are all in the process of taking responsibility for your deepest emotions and gradually releasing them in the light of your own angelic consciousness. Your angel self has compassion for the deep fear and gloominess you can experience in this earthly realm. It belongs to the essence of the Christ energy that it descends to the lowest point, where darkness seems all around, and makes light's presence known. It is no great feat to spread light in a cosmic realm of love and safety. The true power of the Christ energy is that it pierces through the darkest cells, that it brings love where hopelessness abounds. On earth, a planet so lovely and rich, and yet so removed from oneness and love, the Christ energy prepares a seedbed and opens up new vistas. You are all sprouts of this seed and pioneers of a new era. Even if your road seems difficult and heavy, you all have accomplished a great deal and by your own interchanges have helped open the gates for the new wave of light energy now pouring down on earth. Even now, it will not be easy. Even now, a lot of darkness is coming to the surface. Abuse of power, fear, old energy. Therefore, I ask you to keep faith in your mission, to bring the light of your sprouted Christ energy to your own inner darkness. The children of the new era will be grateful to you. They need you, but they will also give you something in return. They carry happiness in their hearts, a delightful freshness and a living remembrance of home. They shine with joy and love like a budding flower full of promise. This energy can open up your heart and stir a sense of playfulness and lightheartedness in you. All of you who feel old and worn out, you have gone through a lot. Reach out your hands to the newcomers. They need your support and experience, and they will bring love and merriment into your lives. This is a process that touches you all, whether you are dealing with children directly or not. It touches you all. I would like to conclude with a moment of silence in which I ask you to connect to the earth. The earth itself is an intelligence, a being with a soul who is looking forward to the arrival of the new children. She is smiling to herself when she looks at you, for when you arrived here, in another time, you were such beautiful children too. You were the pioneers and the mediators. Feel the gratefulness of earth to you. You are so tied in with this huge process. Then feel the arrival of the new children, full of anticipation and inspiration. They are also here to help you. Their liveliness and wisdom will cheer you up and remind you that the new age is dawning, that the longest mile is indeed the last mile home, and that the flowers of love and peace will truly blossom. End of chapter. All right, so we're down to just one more very short chapter, accompanied by the reading of a note on channeling and a brief biography of Pamela. So that'll be a, actually a pretty short episode for the final episode of the Yeshua Channelings, which will be next week. Then I'm going to be doing just solo episodes, interviews, I've got another book that I'm going to read one chapter from and then have the author on, which is Pauline Edward in her new book, Gateway to a New World, which I was more than honored to write the foreword for. So yeah, if you haven't already, go check that out. You can find it on Amazon and hopefully somewhere else, but if not, you can find it on Amazon. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about Amazon. But anyway, yeah, um, I definitely want to have on NDE experiencers and all that again. I think I've just been a little bit, maybe, I think maybe my heart's shifted a little bit on which course I want to take with the podcast because there is so much content out there with NDE experiencers. But, you know, I know that's not a problem to have even more exposure and, and discussion on it, but it just kind of felt like maybe that market was saturated and, and I kind of needed to run with, you know, my own thing here. And the channelings have just really kind of been the channelings, I guess, have just been really compelling because, you know, NDE experiences really do vary quite a bit, but I've noticed that the channelings that come through have a real consistency to them, or at least the ones that I've been, you know, fortunate enough to come across. And usually that is recognizable by 
the channelings being filled with love, acceptance, unity, a message of divinity and innate worthiness. And the channelings that I would personally avoid are ones that, that are steeped in fear and judgment and punishment and basically karmic karmic debts. You know, to me, that's kind of something that is a bit of a red flag, but we all have to use our own discernment on these things. No one has the perfect corner of truth as a human being. We're all working with various um, old beliefs and ideas about the way things are that are probably mostly wrong for all of us. But again, that's kind of the point, right? We're, we're meant to have this really deep kind of foggy experience until we lift out of the fog and go, oh my God, I forgot who I was. And oh my God, who I am is God. <laughs> and this is friggin' awesome. And there, there is no punishment and um, guilt and wrongness that, that in my highest form, I am perfect and made exactly the same as my creator source, which doesn't require praise. You know, creator doesn't need us to bow down and worship because all it is is a pure love energy and love only gives itself out freely. It never expects anything back. You know, that's one thing you could maybe point to in the Bible and say there's a pretty good breakdown is the verses on love and how, you know, it really only gives and does not expect anything in return and that it's gracious and kind and patient and all the different aspects of what, you know, true unconditional love is. And to me, that's that's what source energy is. So it created us to do as we please, and we may please to do things that are um, way, that, that give us the illusion that we're way far apart from our source. But that's all, it's all good because we're doing it within the creative lens and scope of what source gave us to play with. So you can't ever go too far. You can't ever veer off into darkness forever and spiral out into hell or something. Those are all very man made humanistic ideas that are steeped in the old energy of fear, control, hierarchy, authoritarianism. And we're moving past that. We're moving into a new era of truly embracing that creative spark. And I know I repeat myself on this a lot, but it's the most important stuff that I think I can try and communicate. We, But we can't get there without letting go of our own traumas and past and programming and guilt and the fears that, that bind us. That was another thing I asked Yeshua was why why am I not able to channel you directly or you know be a be a channeler like some of these other people and he explained to me that there's still these fears that I'm holding on to these long standing fears and and times that I spent in past lives and ignorance and and fear and how I can visualize that fear as whatever it form it manifests as and and for me it was like a big strong angry masculine man and he just said, basically, take that energy and, and take that, that strong, masculine man and, and watch him as he ages backwards. He does a, a, you know, a Benjamin Button and becomes a kid and then notice that fear and anger within that child. And it, it, does it feel more, more tangible as to where it's coming from? And I was like, well, yeah, it's, it's from his programming, from his parents, from his background, from his upbringing. That fear and that anger is from his own hurt of feeling disconnected from from love and from acceptance. And so he said, okay, good. Can you take your hand and reach it out to the child and take a hold of his hand and, and, and tell him that you are, that he's okay. Or I can't remember exactly what Yeshua said, but basically to, but basically to reach out to the child in love and to assure it that it didn't need to fear anything. And then that's kind of how we are to approach our fears is to reduce them down to the most innocent, version of what they are, which is really just who we are, lost children who feel torn away from mom and dad, which is creator source, which is what we wanted to do when we incarnated as souls. We wanted to feel that illusion of being separate. So, But there's a wounding that happens with that. There is a feeling of being torn away from, from home. And anyone who's ever been homesick or lost their parents tragically or suddenly or anything like that can attest to the heartbreak of, of losing that connection, um, even if it was your choice. And obviously when we came here, we didn't remember that it was our choice initially. We just thought something really bad happened. That's why the, these lives can be so difficult is because we really experienced such a deep level of trauma when we broke away from home. 
But even within that, we didn't do anything wrong. Or it's, we didn't do it because we were being punished or because we were sinful for wanting to experience all of this. It's just, it was a necessary part of the program. It wouldn't make this experience work if there wasn't dynamics of dark and light, of pain and of love. But again, it all, it all funnels back upwards to a re-merging with Source. And I don't know how that all looks. I don't know what it looks like to be back in eternity with Source, but having all these experiences, like how that plays out and what we get to do with that. But, you know, my thinking is we get to be whatever creators we want to be and probably create our own universes or who knows what, man. I mean, I, I really think it's not worth speculating as a human as to what's going to happen because it's it's too far beyond the scope of a human brain. And even with, um, you know, maybe elevated consciousness at your disposal, it's still not something that I think we could really wrap our heads around in, in, in any way. But we will when we leave these bodies. So I'm stoked for that. Um, hopefully not too soon. And yeah, this podcast suddenly goes away. Then I probably just, something bad happened. Um, I'm not saying that to be alarmist, but I intend to keep this going and I will definitely let everyone know if I decide to, to end the podcast. But I do have this weird gut feeling I've had for a long time that I'm going to die, you know, fairly young, but you know, I don't feel morbid about it, but there's always the fear of leaving behind my family, my wife, and my children. But I know my children are part of that new era of consciousness, and that they're going to that they're going to have so many just incredible opportunities available to them in this new era, and this letting go of the old, archaic, warfaring type of civilization. We have to, and we will move beyond it. I, I fully trust that. That being said, we do have a presidential election coming up here in this country, which has some pretty massive implications. And I've just decided not to give in to the, the fear and the anguish around that because in the past, this would have been really, really tough for me. But I'm really letting go of that need to drive my, my fears and my projections of all the bad things that could happen into a situation. And instead, just going, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to operate with love within whatever happens. And even if it, it results in my bodily death, so what? You know, Yeshua talks about this. Death is a liberator. Death is a friend. It's not something that we are to be like really flippant about, but it's something that we don't have to have all this fear and anguish over because it's always a gateway back home. It's always a pathway back to our, our light and our understanding and a place where we can't experience anguish, sorrow, and physical pain anymore. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> but I know I've been there. I know I came here not to just have the exact same experience. So I trust that whatever is happening in this life is part of my plan to expand my consciousness and expand my understanding of who and what I am and, and how that relates to the all. So, all right, well... I said I was going to keep it short on the back end of the chapter, and that was a lie. Not a malicious lie, just me being me. So thank you so much for listening, though. I really, really, really appreciate everyone who stuck around or given me a chance. And I again, my, my only real hope here is that it leads you back to yourself, that you don't walk away from this podcast going, man, that David guy, he really knows some stuff. Like, I don't care about that, really. I want you to go, wow, am I really the divine answer that I've been seeking? Is the truth of all things that I need really within me and not some authority, not some practice, not some discipline, not some humanistic, egotistical way of approaching getting in touch with who we are? That's all I want. So I hope that that's what is stirring in your soul. And if not, then epic fail. All right, I hope you are well in this weird and wild time to be alive on Earth. Just keep remembering to love and forgive yourself and to love and forgive those around you and to just go in love and light, be well, and namaste. Namaste.